John here. So in the previous two videos, I shared some tips that can help you with your focus and also as a way to make uh, technical practice a bit more fun. I have another one here and this one involves improvisation and improvisation I think is crucial for anyone, even if you're not really looking to be the best improviser in the world, it's always going to be very helpful to at least have some decent improvisational chops so you can you know get around the instrument in a more spontaneous way and not everything has to be practiced and written out uh, one of the things though when you want to incorporate improvisation into something specific that you want to learn is that it can be a bit tricky because the improvisation then you kind of want to play stuff off the cuff most of the time but when it comes to learning something specific you kind of want to get the good reps in but this approach is sort of semi-improvisational in the sense that we're going to have a set number of patterns that we want to practice. And those patterns are going to depend on whatever you're working on right now. So I'm just going to demonstrate it with alternate picking, but you can use any technique that you want. And I'm going to use the A major scale here, but if it's not obvious, you can use whatever tonality you're working on. So I'm just going to use this three note per string scale. Then I'm going to choose a few different patterns and initially I would suggest that you keep it to maybe three or four so you don't get overwhelmed. And also make sure that the tempo is low here because it's not about improvisation in the sense of playing this awesome solo. It's about getting the reps in but doing it in a more spontaneous fashion. So I'm going to use this pattern. The old Paul Gilbert one. Slash El Demiola. And then we have Paul Gilbert plus one. And we can do uh, an A version of that. And a B version, right? And then we can go just ascending six. And then maybe going up and back again. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. And then I usually choose a subdivision, so I'm going to use 16 tones in this case and just my foot. But obviously you can use a drum machine, a metronome or whatever, but just for this demonstration I'm using my foot. So I'm going to find a, a decently slow tempo, slow enough so I don't make any mistakes. So let's see, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, around that tempo. So obviously you want to do this a bit longer and initially it's totally fine if you stay on one shape for a while, one pattern for a while. So maybe you go, so you get into the whole, now I did 16 note triplets instead, but you get the idea that you want to get into this whole frame of mind of actually being able to play something and think of something else to play while you're playing the, the other thing and then go on going on to that and if you've been improvising a lot maybe you feel this is super easy but i've seen this with a ton of students where they kind of get this you know deer in the headlight look on them when they try to do this and you're like oh, oh shit oh i don't know what to do and you know everything breaks down so if that happens to you, don't worry, totally normal, but then you need this even more than you think. So some things you can do to, to fix that is simply slow down, it's one thing. So it's totally fine to start. You know, do it like that, it's totally fine. So you don't need to do that at a high tempo or anything. It's not about that. It's about being able to get the good reps in on whatever sequences you're working on, which is obviously very important. So don't just take these sequences, take something that you're working on that's fairly similar that you can switch between. Also, it doesn't have to be two strings, can be, you know, more strings than that, can be pretty much anything. So it's just your imagination that sort of sets the limit here. But it's the, the actual, uh, practice technique itself is simply choosing two, three, four, five different patterns and then you improvise by going between them. 
So uh, once you've done that in, in this one though, if, if you do it on two strings like I did here, I think it's important to, to keep going throughout that scale shape. So then you will start on the next string group, A and D string, and do the same thing. And maybe at this point, instead of doing 16th notes, maybe you choose to do 8th note triplets. So you go... And one thing I try to do as well is that as I come closer to either the end of the timer, if I use a timer, or just you know the end of, of my improvisational sort of uh, loop here, I try to make it so that I end up on the downbeat uh, when I when I stop. So I don't, I don't just stop like you know anywhere. So I want it to to end it rhythmically correct so to speak and I'm not, I don't really care about ending it on the one of a bar of 4-4 four, four, anything like that which you also could do uh, which would make it even more tricky but making sure that you actually land on the downbeat. So I'm gonna do it once more now on the D and G string and then you can sort of look out for that thing that I'm hopefully landing on the downbeat again so I'm gonna do 16th notes now so same combinations. <laughs> Right, so that's the idea. Uh, and then you do that on the G and B string, B and E string, and then you can move on throughout the rest of the, the scale shapes, or maybe choose another set of exercises that you do. So the idea is to have fun with this technique and see whatever things you can come up with. And also try, you can even try different techniques as well. Meaning that you can try, maybe you decide on doing uh, some sweep picking. Maybe at that shape that shape and maybe some picking in there as well. So maybe I go, so I would go. Right, so that was only three different variations. Uh, and as you can see here, or maybe not, but when I do this, now I have to start this one with an upstroke not a downstroke as I initially did it. So that's a, it's another reason why it's important to, to work on picking starting on both a downstroke and an upstroke. All right, so let me know in the comments if you like this kind of stuff and if you feel that it helped you. And also, if you're still watching at this point but you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and see you in the next video. <laughs>to have real issues with fast alternate picking when it came to two notes per string. I was fine with three notes per string, but the two notes per string thing was a bit harder to, to crack. So if you struggle with fast alternate picking as well, and you don't know what to practice or for how long, I've created the perfect solution for you in the form of the Pentatonic Picking Power Book. So in this book, you'll find a daily workout that will not only help your pentatonic picking, but will also upgrade your overall alternate picking technique. So it contains basically the same exercises I used myself to develop my picking abilities, as well as numerous students over the years that I've given the same exercise to with great results. So I know these exercises work as long as you put in the work. So it's not a quick solution or quick fix. It will still take a lot of work, but at least you have a very easy to follow routine. So if you're up for a big alternate picking upgrade in 2024, I cannot think of a better start. It's nine bucks and I think it's very underpriced, but I did it that way just so as many people as possible could be helped by this. So check that out.